Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video I am doing Charlie's 3 month update. I've said it every single time, where does the time go? Honestly, I cannot believe he's 3 months old already. He is just thriving, he's such a good boy. And I think we'll just start with the obvious, he is really, really big. I've not had him weighed since maybe about three weeks ago and when they did he was just off 14 pounds. So he's really big and he's still in the 91st centile for his height and his weight. Now if you've not had a baby recently, I think it is quite a recent thing, maybe just before I had Ella and you don't really know what this whole centile thing is, then basically it's an indication of how big your baby is in comparison to other babies their age. So um, Charlie is kind of like top of the scale for his height and his weight. Um, Ella was always in the middle, she was always in the 50th centile, but he is in the 91st which is like really big and really tall and really long um, and just really heavy and stuff so he's just a big chunky broad boy and they think that when you can work it out at this size that it might just be like that, like a steady growth on the 91st centile scale so when he's older he might be like a really tall big strapping handsome man when he's older which is all good stuff because we always want our boys to be big and broad and chunky so I'm really happy that he's doing so well. So on that note, he is now in three to six months clothes, which when I tried to compare that to how Ella was, she was always at the end of the scale when it came to sizes. So if something was three to six months, she wasn't in that kind of size until she was six months. But Charlie seems to be the complete opposite. He's three months and he's now in three to six months. The good news is I've got a whole wardrobe of new clothes for him, which I'm going to be doing a baby boy haul really soon to show you everything I've picked up. I went to an event with mamas and papas, which you've probably already seen on my blog and on Instagram, but I went to a mamas and papas event and the clothes they have for boys are amazing. You should really go and have a look if you struggle for boys clothes. But yeah, I will be doing a boy haul really really soon. When Charlie was born he had quite a bit of hair but then it kind of fell out and then came back in really quickly and then it went bald again and now it's come back and now it's starting to fall out again. So it's kind of went up and down which I suppose is kind of normal when baby's hair falls out and comes back again. Especially now that he's starting to move around at night and kind of turning looking for a feed. He's getting that kind of like mark on the side of his head where it's just kind of gone bald. But his hair does look quite dark. Not quite as dark as what Ella's was when she was that size, but I think it will have a tendency to go darker. Because he's not got a lot just now, it looks really fair. But when you look at the actual colour of the strands, they do look quite dark. So who knows, you might find that he'll be as dark as what Ella is when he's older. I think that will be the case because I'm now looking at pictures of Ella when she was three months old and then looking at Charlie and it's just the same baby. I didn't see it so much before but not until I looked at this specific picture which I will show you the picture I'm talking about. It was at my birthday and it was the exact same stage as what Charlie's at just now and that it just looks like Charlie. Honestly even Ella says when you say who's that in the picture she thinks it's Charlie so I think you can't kid the kids and she thinks that's her brother so they might end up just looking the same when they're older which would be really cute to have a boy version of Ella. Like Ella as well he's starting to get darker eyes. His eyes were really pale when he was born and um, whereas Ella's were like jet black you couldn't even tell the difference between her pupil and like her iris whereas Charlie's are really quite pale and his pupil seemed really prominent when you looked in his eyes so now his eyes are starting to go a bit darker they almost look like a kind of navy colour but except when you stare right into his iris you can see little tiny bits of brown through it as well so I think his eyes might go nice and chocolate brown like Ella's too which is funny because Fraser and I both have green eyes to have two kids with brown eyes I don't know what the genetic setup is on that but yeah I think his eyes are going to go dark which will be really nice he'll be tall dark and handsome he's also more awake during the day now sometimes I look at him and he's just kind of staring at me I kind of touched on that in the last video that I did that he's so much more alert and he's just kind of looking around he's starting to take notice of things like he'll sit and watch the TV screen or sometimes if I'm quite far away from him and I look over and I start chatting to him he smiles back from quite a distance away which just shows how fast his eyes are developing and everything as well so he can see further distances he's now watching the TV and he started to like watch when Lola walks by that's 
that's our dog. So when she walks by and he's maybe doing tummy time or he's lying on his back on the floor, you can see him like just watching her go by and he follows her with his eyes. So that's really nice to see him sort of taking the world in, um, especially when we're out and about in the pram as well. I can see him kind of like looking around when he's lying back in his pram. And yeah, he's just taking everything in. It's so nice to see that he is more aware of what's going on around him. He is still really content. As much as he's awake during the day, he is quite happy just to sit there. He's not a measy baby. He doesn't look to be held. The only thing I would say is he's been struggling with like kind of what I would think is the early onset of teething. Ella was exactly the same. About 13 weeks she started teething. He is the same and it's all the same things that she had when she was that age. It's the constant drooling and sort of like looking as if they're hungry. So he'll put his hands in his mouth and like chew away on his fist so everyone thinks he's hungry and will say to me does he need fed when really it's just his gums are really hurting. He wants something to just chew on but he's too small just now to hold on to anything. He won't grip anything in his hands because he's just a little bit small yet which is very frustrating for Ella because she wants to give him all of her toys. Um, I've mentioned this in a few Instagram posts she comes up with one of her toys and like says Charlie to hold it and she kind of opens his hands up and tries to put in like a little troll doll or whatever she wants to give him and because he can't quite grip something and she sometimes offer something out to him. He doesn't have the motor skills to just grab it back off of her and hold it, which she finds quite frustrating, which is a bit of a shame. But, you know, long may that last because as soon as he can start grabbing stuff, I'm sure she'll have a bit of an issue when it comes to sharing with him. So fingers crossed she still has that attitude as soon as he wants to start picking things up from her. On that note, actually, he is very suky with Ella because he spends a lot of time with her. So if I'm maybe like doing something like just grabbing something from the kitchen, I tend to sit Charlie with Ella, which I know a lot of people would be going, oh my God, why are you leaving a baby with a, like another baby, essentially? But she's so gentle and I'm literally, I can see everything that's going on. I'm just a stone's throw away. I'm literally right next to them. But he does spend a lot of time propped up next to her and she puts her arms out and lets him cuddle in. It is so adorable. She often, like at night time, if she's watching a film before bed, she'll sit up on the couch and says she wants to hold it being Charlie. So I normally just prop him in next to her. She puts her arm out and he cuddles in and quite often he'll fall asleep. So um, I've actually got a little clip of them doing that, which is so, so cute. It actually made me cry and right now I'm actually like getting a lump in my throat just thinking about it because she's so good with them. Like, I actually couldn't have wished for her to be any better. I'm actually getting upset. How silly is that? And I know this is Charlie's update but we need to give it a wee shout out to Ella for being such a good big sister because she has made this so much easier, the whole two under two situation. But I think that is a whole different video. I'll go on to how I'm finding having two kids at such a close age gap in another video at another time. As far as sleep is going, he has started to get into this little routine on his own. I didn't get Ella into a routine and I wouldn't say that I'm against a routine. I sometimes think that having such a strict routine really limits you and I think that if you totally home in on they've got to be bed for certain times, I almost think that that sets me up for a, a fail almost. If I say that they've got to be in bed bang on eight o'clock and it's like 10 past eight in my head, that's almost like I've failed at something. That's like one of the things I think really triggers like my stress or annoyance or like anxiety is if I set up too many targets and I don't meet them in the day. If I was to say, right, Charlie's got to be in his bed for seven o'clock, then someone asks us out for dinner or my mum says do you want to come over here and see us then I'm like well we're now restricting ourselves to do anything at night time because we're stuck at home and we can't go anywhere which is just not what I did with Ella so I'm not planning on doing it with Charlie either I just feel as if my kids should adapt around us as much as us adapting around them but there's got to be a balance somewhere and I don't want to put him into a routine just now because guaranteed it could get trashed in like a week's time. I feel as if you could get yourself so homed in and having a routine that it would just get totally undone as soon as something like teething starts or weaning starts or anything else that kind of contributes to their development could totally trash it so what's the point? I did it with Ella and she kind of just got into a natural routine. So if anyone's got any questions on routines and how to just go with the flow a bit more then please ask in the comments because it worked with Ella and now she sleeps from like half past seven till sometimes nine o'clock the next morning and it's not just because she's a really good sleeper it's just because she went into that state herself 
um, and we just allowed it. So we just tried to stay a bit more calm and laid back and relaxed about it and it kind of worked in our favour. What normally happens is Ella gets a bath after dinner time around about, I don't know, 7 o'clock. She'll get bath and Charlie sometimes goes in with her as well. Normally what I do is I put Charlie in the bath, on the shower tray, get him washed and then Ella sits and plays while I just grab him on a towel and dry him and get him changed in the bathroom. I put him down in his next to me crib which he's still sleeping in just now. It's got loads of space inside it as well so I can imagine he's going to be in there for a little bit longer. I normally just lie him in there and he tends to after a bath just go for a sleep. I don't know if it's all the lavender but he goes to sleep for a little while but often what I've found now is he'll actually go from like maybe about half past seven just whenever I get finished with him in the bath. I get him changed and put him down in his snooze pod and he'll sleep there until like 10, 11 o'clock. He'll just sleep from then for like a few hours and it's not really because I've tried to make him do that. I've just put him down, turned on Whisper the Humming Bear which you'll have seen me do lots of pictures with Whisper. It's a really good sleep aid. I normally just switch that on, put him down, he's still awake and by the time I go and get Ella he's sleeping and he sometimes can sleep from then right through until 4 o'clock in the morning. Then get up for a feed and then go back down again for another few hours, maybe until about half past eight. So he does sleep really, really well, but I don't think it's because I've been pushing the whole routine thing. It just kind of has happened and he is really quite a sleepy baby anyway. So most people joke that meet me saying they've never seen Charlie awake, but I promise you he is awake quite a bit, but he is just a very, very laid back baby. I would like to think that 9 times out of 10 I'm quite a laid back mum as well. I think second time round you just learn what's actually important to stress over and what's not and I'm not about to stress out about the sleep thing. So I just mentioned there that he does sleep in his bedside crib which is the snooze pod which I'm absolutely loving. I've got it just now just set up as an actual crib. I've not taken the side down just now but the way it's working out for us is perfect. He sleeps in there really happily. He gets up at like maybe 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock-ish in the morning. Very rarely will he wake up any more than that. If he does wake up any more than that, then normally it's because he's going through a growth spurt and he's maybe feeding more frequently, but maybe another twice he could be up. And as you will have picked up just through what I've been saying, he is still being breastfed exclusively to a degree because he has had a couple of formula bottles if he's been watched for maybe an hour or so, but I think in total he's had maybe three or four, like over the last two months. Um, so you guys know that I go and get my lashes topped up um, because I've got semi-permanent lashes in um, and whenever he gets watched when I go and get them done and I've not expressed the bottle then I'll just give him one of the little Aptamil pre-made bottles with a sterilised bottle to my mum and she feeds him when I'm away if he wakes up and looks to be fed. I'm going to do a whole video on our breastfeeding journey and experience because I'm actually now only feeding them on one side, um, which I told you in the last video, I'm still doing that. So I think that's been about seven weeks of just exclusively breastfeeding on one side and we've been absolutely coping fine. I've had no issues with like grazing or mastitis or anything like that. It's just been so much easier and I find that at the moment, the way it's going, we're probably going to continue for quite a while now. I don't see me stopping anytime soon because it's just working out too well for me. And this is the stage of breastfeeding I was dying to be at with Ella, but I stopped about four months with her when I started weaning. And quite a few people are asking me, when are you going to stop breastfeeding? Which I don't take offence to that question, but it is quite a kind of, well, why do you think I should be stopping? Like, what do you think is wrong with me just doing this? But I think it's more of a concern of, is it too much on me just like, feeding this baby because I always joke and say to Fraser that I'm Charlie's life support machine like he needs me. It should be quite draining but I don't feel like it is. I actually feel that breastfeeding must have a lot of benefits health wise for me because I do think I'm in more of a positive state of mind and I feel like it's doing wonders for like my skin and my hair and just generally how I'm bonding with Charlie. I feel like it's a really nice thing for us to have together. The fact that it's now coming really easy I'm finding it a bit of a struggle to even think about stopping because what would be the point? It's so much easier for me, it's something less to think about and I'm just really enjoying the experience with him. Charlie's also really, really strong. Like, 
I've started to notice whenever I sit him down, he's been pushing his legs right up straight and he's trying to stand up. I've actually got a picture of Ella doing this at 13 weeks as well when I was changing her on a changing mat. And when I stood her up at the side um, to, to lift her, she just stood straight on her feet and held my hands. So he is very, very strong. His head control is amazing. It's been really good for quite a while. I can actually hold him on my hip now and he doesn't do like any crazy head motions. He's just quite happy to sit and he's just always so happy. I've noticed that he struggles really bad with wind, but once he gets rid of it, he's quite happy, but he doesn't tend to complain unless anything's worth complaining about. He doesn't do like a boredom cry. If he's crying about something, then it's got to be something that's bothering him, like he's hungry, or he has wind, or he's got sore gums, or sometimes he has a little complain cry when he's tired, but as soon as I give him a dummy, he just goes to sleep. He does take the dummy, he takes it really well. The only dummies that work for Charlie are the newbie uber soothers. I've tried um, a little one from Boots, but I think it was a newborn dummy and it was quite small, um, so he doesn't really like that anymore. I've tried the Tommy Tippy ones that are quite straight, he doesn't like those either. But the newbie ones are kind of like a cherry shaped one, so once he's got it in his mouth, it's quite difficult for him to spit it back out again. So I think that makes the biggest difference for him. So if you're struggling getting your baby to try and take a dummy, then I would suggest trying them. I'll leave a link to them in the description box so you can have a look. One of the biggest milestones for Charlie's three month update is that he has started laughing, like proper belly laughs. Whenever I do that and tickle him, you can see him all seizing up and it's as if he's getting a shock. So normally if I just look at him and he starts smiling, he starts chuckling, it's just so adorable. Ella likes to tickle him as well to try and get a laugh out of him. So he has been looking at her as well and just smiling right into her eyes, which is just so cute. It's so lovely to see that he notices her and knows who she is and gives her something back because she tries so hard to please him. She's always bringing him toys and trying to make him laugh and tickling him and wants to cuddle him and wants to help me change him. So yeah, he is very, very attached to Ella. So at this stage, I don't really know if there's anything that I've missed out about Charlie's development. He's had his immunisations and he's due his next set next week. So um, I'm not really looking forward to that, although last time he coped really, really well. He just let out a scream at the beginning and then that was him, it was really quite good. So I'm hoping that that's going to be the same on his next visit. For my next update, I'm hoping that he will have just tried his first solids because we're going to start weaning at four months. I'm going to try some baby led weaning as well to see how we got on with that. We've had a lovely few weeks together since the last update. He's just doing really well. He's such a good little member of our family. And honestly, if I could guarantee that another baby would be like Charlie, then I would probably have another one because he is just so good natured. If I've missed anything out that you would like to know, then just please ask a question in the comments box and I'll get right back to you. I always write back to all the comments that you guys leave. And thank you so much for supporting my channel because I recently hit 2,000 subscribers, which I cannot believe that there's 2,000 of you guys out there that watch my videos. And if you've got any suggestions for future videos, then please let me know. If you're not already following me on all my other social media channels, you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. I've also got a blog page as well, which is just mamareed.com. Please don't forget to subscribe and thank you so much for watching. Give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it and I will see you on the next video. Bye!